My name is Ramsey, his name is Reader of Retromation. Welcome back to Stu Valley. <laughs> Stu's Do Valley. That's going Stu great. Valley. Going great. Who's Stu? Who's uh, Stu? Is there you? is no Stu in this town. Stu is uh, one of the modded characters that I plan on implementing. Oh. I do want to do modded Stardew. Like, yes, no, I, I did see after the series is over. You're highly considering. What kind of mods would you want to run? I mean, I would have to figure out what kind of mods exist. Like I saw, I've seen like a tractor mod. I've seen new NPCs. I've seen like mm -hmm. a, a mode that makes just makes the game actually more challenging. Uh, all kinds of stuff. There's like a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of mods for the game. I'd have to figure out what I would add later. I'm sure there's all kinds of good yeah. ones. I've I've always felt like this game has the qualities of being eminently moddable. But I've just never seen any of the mods. Like, it it seems like every other game that is so moddable has one big killer mod. I can't see what the killer mod is for this game. I don't I don't know. I'm sure I'm sure there is one. I'm sure there is. But like I don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean the battle royale mod seems interesting, but that's not it. So what do we have to do? Uh, water all the plants, and then pat the pets and stuff like that? I think you've got, uh, yeah, you've got Robin down here already building another one for us. So that's uh, okay. handy. Maybe I we should get another chicken. Sure. I know there's a mod that, um, whenever you open up the minimap, it tells you exactly where every person is. I like that a lot. Yes. I frankly think that should probably be a base feature of the game. I don't like having to go to the wiki just to look up, okay, where is Demetrius on Thursday afternoons? Yeah. That's one that I was like, I was considering adding to my not modded series. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I always feel like it has to be all or nothing. Like, this is a modded series and it's wacky. Or just like, this is a series. Yeah. But... I, I mean... I think this far after the release of the game, there is an argument to be made for just kind of like more standard, uh, like more obviously integratable mods to just be used anyway. Yeah. What's your favorite Especially mod? Especially like quality of life ones that don't really add content. What's your favorite mod in general for anything? <sighs> favorite mod in general? It like, the Fallout 1 Revival Project might be it, just because it was the thing that enabled me to get into Fallout 1. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I think the Revival Project is number two. Like, I don't remember the name of it, but it's effectively, like, Fallout 1 updated. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. It might be... What what games do I even play that were heavily moddable? Say this by. Slay the Spire is heavily moddable. I really, really still love, like, uh, a lot of the kitchen sink kind of, like, broader mods for that game that I played, like Hubris and and uh, uh, Replay the Spire as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think, actually, probably one of my favorites was the Bard. Mm -hmm. I found the Bard so, so interesting. What did he do? What's neat about so, it? Uh, so the bard would uh, play cards that would give you one note as well, like kind of in the same way that the, the defect channels orbs, you sure. would channel notes. And then when you had uh, like your, your bar full out with notes, uh, you could click on the bar and then use that based on what combinations of notes were in there to cast another ability. Huh. It would effectively just generate and play a card for you instantly. Like uh, an but invoker? Because kind of a situation kind of like an invoker but any unused notes would just go like they would uh they would stay and all of the used notes would disappear so you end up with a bar that's just constantly got notes in it and you're just cycling out notes to try and make different patterns hmm. but one of the cool things is you could make a pattern and then uh in doing so remove those notes and move the other two notes uh the other notes together and that would make another pattern it would be huh. really really cool and all the cards were really well made and it was a little bit of a reference to me in there. But I like oh, it's perfect. Then. It was... then it's the best. Exactly. I mean, Great I feel mod. like a bard character with a reference to Rhapsody is like pretty. <laughs> that's like that's a match made in heaven it, right there. 
it, it was like perfectly positioned to be in there. Yeah, I totally. Yeah. It was uh, in particular, uh, it was the card Rhapsody, which was uh, a legendary card. And I, I looked at it initially and I was like, look, it would be self-centered to say that this is a reference yeah. to me. It's like, it's it's just a musical term, right? Yes, it is. How dare uh, you? But then afterwards, Keo, Keo being the person who made the mod, uh, explained to me, hey, you might want to have a look at that card art again. And the card art, uh, if you like blur your eyes a little, looks exactly like my old channel logo. Hmm. Hmm. It's got like the exact same coloration and the exact same kind of swirl and kind of oh, well there you it's, go. It's so nice and so subtle in a way that oh, oh, oh. oh that's the best. Feels good. That's the best. Oh, and always like for, for referencing things like um, show shows or whatever, just anything that does any kind of referencing. Like when when you know what it is, you feel like it feels great to see and notice it and you feel like you're part of a secret club but if you don't know what it is it doesn't ruin it at all like a lot of other you know like a modded item in a game could just be like just such an obvious overt like pandering kind of a thing and it's just like it, yeah. other, and it's part of a mod pack with a bunch of items or something and it would have or a cards and this one card is just like I, I mean i don't i don't get it like it's not like I, <laughs> I got a I got an item in um, in the more fluff dicey dungeons mod now, mm -hmm. uh that's just called it's called differing thorns because of a a moment where I every time in parallel universe I yell that thorns is different because I always forget because I'm like I can't attack them because they have thorns but it just heals them in that in that mode. So y'all thorns yep. is different. So uh, <laughs> Jackie added differing thorns, and it's it's uh, you can put in two max three, and you gain thorns equal to the difference between the dice. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> love it. And I just I love it. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> so those, you, those are exactly the kind of ones that I love. The kind of like they're very very uh they're subtle and they preserve tonal unity with like the rest of the game when things are so obviously references even if you don't know what they're a reference to that's the only point where i'm like uh, uh. yeah it's like it's like instead if you put in a card that was like the retromation when you put in a six play into the gungeon instead <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i which I, would have been I a good card love a card <laughs> I, I would low-key love a card that just is called new sixes I know. I, I, you, you put have. A six in and it gives you some I, sixes back. I recorded a dicey. I, you know, that's never gonna go away for me. I, every time, <laughs> I, I got six, uh, whatever, six charm or something like that. Not even just, it, it wasn't even new sixes. It's just, uh, it was, um, I, th it might be a modded. It's just put in six pips, get a six back. And I, every time, I, I had to. I did it every time. New six. <laughs> it's just. I, I I can't get over that. I uh, I loved it so much. It, like, <laughs> I, I I kind of do always like a, a good joke that's based on like we both know, like we all know I was wrong. But if you just lean into it yeah. as hard as you possibly can, you kind of redeem yourself and roll out of it. Uh, it's it's great. <laughs> it's it's so good. I can't. It makes me smile every time. It'll it'll uh, it'll live on past your dicey series into my dicey series. Oh, Sincerely boy. appreciated. It needed a home. <laughs> Highly recommended checking out the more fluff mod though. It is s bonkers. Seven hundred new items. Seven hundred. Oh my god. <laughs> the only thing that's stopping me is just time there are oh, so yeah. many games out of the moment I know. so many series to run i just i recommend it as just like a sit down and play one afternoon if nothing else mm -hmm. it's just it like not that the game like you know it just variety is all it needed <laughs> to to keep playing like terry yeah. said you made the game and he was like i expected people to get 20 hours out of this game and then stop <laughs> Like, and then it's like, and everyone who plays any roguelikes like, why can't I get a hundred hours and, and to scratch the surface a hundred hours, you know? Yeah. So it's like. I mean, he did, he did create a deck builder roguelike. He had to have a little bit of an inkling that might play it a lot more. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, 
I don't know, but maybe maybe it feels pretentious to think that. Like, especially because he, I, I know he made it very much with the episodes in mind. Like, you play it until you beat all the episodes. If you want to play more, you play the bonus round some. I know that was, like, the idea. And I, I don't know. I think that he, he just didn't expect it. <laughs> I, think, I think you never... I know if I make stuff, I don't expect people to, like, go that crazy with it. Hmm. What what have you uploaded to your channel that you're like, you know what? This could be it. What do you mean? Have you ever uploaded anything that you're like, that you expected to do extremely, extremely well? Yes. What was it? <laughs> Honestly, I, I expected the AI dungeon video to do extremely well. Mm-hmm. I thought that it was going to do extraordinarily well. I thought I th I was so happy with it. I thought it could go viral, but I like I didn't think I like I even even though I I say that I think it could, it was more like a I there's a ch I I thought there was a chance. And and you, when you upload 3 to 5 videos every day, I'm sure you know you're probably not like you don't think in the sense of virality. You think more in the sense, mm -hmm. this is going to do better than yesterday's, maybe, you know? Like, based off of yep. the whatever happened in the title or anything. But that was one of those rare scenarios where I was doing something super different. So I'm like, I have nothing to gauge this off of. This could, I don't know. It's a short video. I don't do short videos. I don't do edited videos. So I mm -hmm. thought there was a chance. But I also, like, temper. Like I, I did actually run across it recently, and it's like it's still like a 10k, I think, at the moment, 15 maybe. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it was at last I looked, it was at 6,000. So I mean, if that's a, if that's true, then it did start to pop off, I guess. Mhm. Mm well, neat. <laughs> it's it's just really unfortunate when I'm you're like, my job. Um, like, oh, what, one of the best things I've done is in a game that I know what, no one watched. Like, I. I, I harp on it like a fair bit recently, uh, but I'm really, really, really proud of the uh, the Disco Elysium series. Yes. But I also understand that like having cultivated yeah. an audience that's mostly interested in uh, roguelikes, a very, very text heavy RPG uh, <laughs> that deals with uh, political and economic <laughs> philosophy. Yeah. Uh, isn't necessarily what they're looking for. But the thing that to think about with that that i've tried to have to tell myself is just like i like when i was doing stardew valley for example mm -hmm. and the two notable things with the stardew valley and bug fables when it came when they came out like stardew valley didn't really do well and bug fables mm -hmm. did pretty good and now stardew valley is my second most watched pilot that's not a gungeon episode of any series i've ever done my Stardew Star Valley is my second most. And Bug Fables is getting up there a lot. Because it's just like, I always, I need to remind myself that, like, first of all, I shouldn't focus too much on stats. Second of all, especially when you're trying out something different, the stats in the first week or even month for an e for evergreen content, like a story that has an end, don't matter mm -hmm. as much. Like, that, uh, true. that Disco Elysium, might catch up to everything else over the course of a year because you maybe. well i mean maybe it will maybe it won't whatever like you know but the fact of the matter is yeah maybe it doesn't resonate with the people watching but like you're also i feel like there's also a, an important point in doing stuff that is uniquely and obviously not 100 percent for your main audience you know like to bring in new yeah. people they, like i totally I, I, I especially totally if you uh, like it especially if you like it because you might bring in you might attract people who like disco elysium now you know mm -hmm. that's a that's a benefit too uh slight digression um, well, I'm gonna but die. also you might want to go to bed because you're about to pass oh, out uh, but fish all day baby the... hell yeah get them done Ooh. sleep tonight oh I've actually gotta click that button cool um the the long tail uh, that you were talking about there is actually something really interesting as well because like when i was doing uh, darkest dungeon for my first two series on it so like yeah the base game through i think i also then did uh like hardcore through like stygian or blood moon whatever it was called at the time mm -hmm. and then i did the uh the crimson court mm -hmm. and all of those series were about 110 150 episodes long yeah and no one watched them at the time no yep. one at all yep. i just 
played them because I wanted to do them. Yeah. And then when I did the uh, the Color of Madness one, mm -hmm. people were like, "Hell yeah! I can't. I'm I'm super excited to see Dun uh, Darkest Dungeon back." And I get asked about Darkest Dungeon like every other day now. Yeah. Like it. I went back recently and looked like mid series at the Crimson Court stuff, and it yeah. was doing really really well. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I I definitely agree with the the kind of. Uh, those things can hit later but also i was speaking yesterday uh with a couple friends in discord uh about the idea of doing lost leader series yeah effectively yeah. just like this isn't in my genre and i know that it's uh it i'm kind of doing it quote unquote at cost opportunity cost like i could yeah. be doing another series instead yeah but I'm... it helps me avoid being pigeonholed as the guy who plays slay the spire <laughs> yeah yeah that's the thing it's like i I played I played Bug Fables because I like Paper Mario a lot, and I have never played. I the last time I played a game like that was in like 2012 or 2013. So I'm like, yeah, I want to show people that like, and and the excitement carries through, you know, mm -hmm. like, and so the excitement carries through, and you have this thing that may be evergreen content, you know, like that people find later, and they'll find it over time, and they'll be like, wow, you're really excited about it, and they'll mm -hmm. be into it, you know, I don't know it's it's hard it's hard and sometimes you can't afford to uh do lost leaders like yeah. i can't i can't right now really like it's i mean i can but like i you know like i'm in a situation curtain back all the way i'm in a situation where like i'm financially fine and things could go mm -hmm. bad for a while and i'd also still be completely fine but i feel like you have to get yourself in a situation where they could they would like drop in a heartbeat and you'd be fine for a while you know yeah like so it's just like i feel like i can't afford to do anything like that for a while and the thing is that that always gets pushed back is when you feel like you can afford to do it, it gets pushed back later and later and later like because mm -hmm. i was just like if, if if i was in the position i was in right now like a year or two ago i'd be like that's it you're you're done like if you stay exactly where you are, <laughs> you're totally fine. But it's like reality hits and bills hit and do, like new medical expenses hit, all that kind of stuff. And you're like, wow, things can go really bad and you have to be doing really well. And I can't afford to do these things as often. So like when you find like little traces of things doing uh, that are kind of lost leadery, but they do remotely well, AKA like me playing Demon Crawl, I'm like, yep. you know, you gotta you hold on tight <laughs> mm -hmm. basically and I, I don't know but like i i could totally see you be you, like your disco elysium series like over the course of time going kaboom like huge like you know like in a year i i could it could I happen i hope so i i uh i i think like i might want to do something after i finish the series like of uh a kind of like a teaser, uh, a thing that could actually make the rounds. Um, maybe only inside my own community, though, because it would probably be like a compilation of all of the different voices and yeah. accents. Yeah, uh, I've wanted to do that long. kind of thing a lot. I wanted to do that for, for like, and and any series that has a concrete end, I've always noodled mm -hmm. with doing that. Like, every everything, just to kind of try to be like, some... go back, go look. It's like I need a I need an editor, <laughs> but I need to make more money to hire an editor because I just I can't I can't. <laughs> I so I I have mentioned before that like if someone were to edit those videos that would be really cool. Um, yeah. But or, I, or rather yeah. when when pressed on that point I I uh, agreed that it would be nice to have edited videos like that and someone offered their services like. Hey raps, uh, I I understand that you need an editor. I'm happy to do this for free. And as soon as I read, I'm happy to do this for free. I'm like, I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I I cannot take advantage of your unpaid labor for a product that I would be feasibly uh, uh, profiting off of. Yeah. It, it it is against me as a person to do that. Yeah. I mean, if someone was to do it, I wouldn't be like, don't do it. But if they were to send me a message to be like, do you want me to do this? I would, you know, yeah, I'd have an impossible time saying anything. Like, it, but, and, and that's happened before. I've actually, I've had, um, there's been uh, like three separate times throughout me doing YouTube. Three times where someone has actually 
reached out different different people and all said that mm-hmm. they wanted to edit together like a uh, highlights of the past 10 Gungeon episodes like to put on my channel or whatever and I mm-hmm. like I it was the same thing I didn't stop them but nobody's also like nobody ever actually follows through is the other thing <laughs> you know like compensation would be like they'd actually you know stay that's the other thing is like you you want them to feel i think the product would be better if they got paid <laughs> just probably right yeah. you know like with a little fire under the butt it would it'd be a better product anyway on most occasions fire being money Not many <laughs> Or at the very least, like if it was a thing that I was relying on, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. It's the same thing as like we were talking in Temtem. Who knows what'll come out? You know, instead of getting the five, the five dollar uh, sofa from the side of the road instead of the uh, the free one, you get what you pay for. I, I mean, I'm 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 kind of fine with free labor. <laughs> it's yeah. just I I don't. I don't like it uh, when it's it's uh, something that is being profited off of uh, on one side. No, I don't like it in like in, in general, like internships and stuff like that. Like I, people doing their passion project. I think like the difference is like someone made like ages ago the the singing ball compilation. I loved that. That was uh, yeah. Who made that? Supremely appreciated. Uh, and that was clearly done out of passion, but yeah, something that would be made for a commercial re- uh, like something uh, that would ends. go on your channel. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That yeah. that shouldn't be free. Yeah, that's in that's what I'm getting at. for me at least. Yeah, that's why in the in the past it was for uh, the 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 best of the previous ten gun depths or whatever. That that would all be, that was all they they said. I would put it on my channel, and they asked they asked for permission if that would be okay. And I was like, I yeah, I'm not gonna cop I'm not gonna copyright strike you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I'm not gonna copyright strike you. you could, yeah, sure. Like that sounds it sounds fun, but like. It, n- it never went through. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't <laughs> totally understand that. You know, committing to a project and not, not necessarily being able to follow through after you realize how large the project is. Yeah, that's, <clears> that's <throat> the... one-offs. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that's so fu- <laughs> funny is that you, for the longest time, I don't you might have changed it now, the longest time you still had it as, like, one of your featured things on your channel. <laughs> channel and seeing the word week <laughs> seeing the word weekly <laughs> weekly every every time you went go to the the channel is so funny yeah, i think i uh, i think i took that down after a while i, I, th- I think it uh, yeah it was up like surprisingly recently but i think but <laughs> but yeah it was <laughs> i don't know it, 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 i think a lot of people would be happy for those to return but i also understand the whole uh like i because every everything like like when I did my AI dungeon video, I'm like, I'm gonna do more of these, you know. <laughs> like, and then I'm like, oh man, that does that, that takes like significantly more time for significantly less return. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's fun, but like, so is doing another new thing. That the, I the the thing I that know. I thought about it is like, despite the fact that like the weekly one-off actually, I think still to this day has performed worse than a single Slate the Spire episode, but. People don't talk about like Slay the Spire episode two hundred and twenty one, right? But people yeah. still talk to me about the the uh, the weekly one offs. So like, yeah. I'm trying to think of it in different metrics other yeah. than like views. It's good to do both comments and likes and stuff as well. That's all. That's one thing stuck with me like a long time ago as as far as YouTube talk that really like shaped my mentality. And that's to have you have two different types of videos that you always need to. Well, you don't ha- always need to, but two different types of videos to upload to have success. One that brings them in and one that keeps you on their mind. Like mm-hmm. you, like a series that, you know, will perform well in search results and people will want to click on based off of seeing the title and thumbnail alone. Like a series like that or a series you can do like that, a.k.a. Gungeon, a.k.a. why I have special images in my Gungeon thumbnails and everything like that that makes it so obvious. Each episode is clearly stands out from each other and can stand can stand on its own. And then all my yep. other series, I don't do that. <laughs> because I could, but a lot of times... It's time, a whole lot of effort. It's a whole lot. One, it's a whole lot of, a lot of effort. Two, none of them do it quite as easily as Gungeon and its items being so clearly, like, you see it at one or two items, you know exactly, like, you, can, you get it. You, it would work with, mm-hmm. like, um... With Binding of Isaac, I could see it working very well too. 
Yeah. And I, and I did a that. A lot of Binding of Isaac creators have that kind of this, uh, format. I think Alexa does that for... Who's that? Not his current series, but I think... Sorry? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> oh, sorry. Alexa Kid 64. Uh, I think he does <laughs> Was he from for, uh, the kid from Party Block Anthems? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, he is! Same yeah. guy. Wow. Funny how they grow. It seems like he was yeah, just 64 I'm, I'm kids yesterday. Anthem is over. <laughs> it's sad that it feels like just yesterday he was 64 kids. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he does too. I think yeah, I think a lot of people do. But yeah, it's like oh, I'll do that and then I'll have all my other series where like I, I don't know, maybe maybe they could at one point I could see Undermine doing it like as they get more items and stuff like that. But at the same time, I like there was when, when crystalline update dropped i was gonna tr for that series that mini series or whatever you want to call it reboot i was gonna start doing it and then i was like wow every run just would have the same item yeah <laughs> so it's just like chakram again yeah it's chakram different though different though but like you can actually you can actually do it now it's still pretty same -y. like i think maybe on release that's it has that kind of a thing too but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to play the new update because, like, the small experience I had with it was uh, it's wild. very bugged. Yeah, that's... I don't get it. I, I saw... And I, like... I mean, this is... I don't... You know, I don't care if you do do or don't play the game. But I am mm. absolutely, like... You know, I think it's good. So, I you know, I think you think it's good with the new update. But uh, whether or not you... If you don't want to play it, I don't want you to play it. But it was... I've never seen half of what you saw in that one episode over my entire course of playing undermine i have yep. no idea who you what deity you angered to make that episode happen it, but i've never seen any of that I, happen ever before i think it might have largely just been that i had the saw bomber in both of the runs and it seemed to be bugged to high heck at the time ah well i know they've changed that a lot they've changed that bomb a lot yes um, like it's, it's a series that I always do want to go back to, but like, I find myself occasionally during episodes getting frustrated at the game. Yeah, it's not designed around. Oh, dang it! It's not designed around. Uh, you know, much like the dicey dungeons thing, it's not designed around the people who are like, I want a hundred hours. But that's like, mm -hmm. you kind of have to design around that for a role. Like, I don't know, because yeah. that's that's what most unfortunately for the developers like the quote-unquote shortcut that the developers take when they're making a roguelike being not having to develop uh, as long of a, like a story, so they're supposed to, you know, just do the same thing but do it over and over. It's not... It's not actually an excuse to make the game only feel like you should be playing it for five hours, ten hours. The same... It's not... Like, by doing that, you're supposed... You're kind of saying, like... I'm trying to give you an endlessly replay. I'm trying to give you an experience that is takes an hour to complete, but you want to play it for, you want to play it potentially with the right person forever. Yeah, and it's kind of it, like, like, it's not a short. It's not actually a shortcut. You, <laughs> but some I think some developers think think it's a shortcut. It I. It, it just seems like the genre as a whole doesn't lend itself to that with the pseudo random elements and the fact that like many of them have so many different interacting systems layered atop one another uh it, it always means that you can have unique runs yeah and when that's like not capitalized upon it can be a little frustrating yeah i don't know my problem with undermine actually wasn't even that my my problem just largely that uh similar to isaac i would have like a couple things where i'm like that's complete bs that shouldn't have happened that shouldn't be able to happen uh, mm, like what like and, how, like a thing an enemy would do or something or what i think an enemy would do uh, like a hit like especially the jumps and the arcing of uh of bullets in 3d space in that game yeah yeah uh, yeah. Like fire that looks like like it slightly rises up and then it lands yeah. directly next to you and you're like that yeah. was going to the other side of the map. Yeah, uh, Undermine needs to decide if it wants iframes on its jump because <laughs> yeah. and I think it needs iframes on its jump because you basically have iframes on on your jump, but the word basically and iframes in the same sentence is a recipe for disaster. 
Mm -hmm. You need guaranteed iframes or no iframes. You know, like, I don't know. It's like, it's, I, and I found out that that's like, that's a big reason why I think Wiz Wizard of Legend lets me down. Is it doesn't have, it doesn't have iframes and it's totally a game that should. <laughs> yep. Because it's like totally a game agree. that has, that could, you can get comboed to death, you need good defensive capabilities. You need, mm -hmm. you need capabilities that seem busted. Does but, Dead Cells have iframes? It does on the dodge. And I gotta ah. say, I, I, I gotta tell you, the last time you heard me talk about Dead Cells, I was not, I was not as pro on it, but I gotta say, it's grown on me a hell of a lot since then. Mm. It's really grown on me. It might be worth checking out. Ooh, I'm extremely, extremely excited to hear it, but for the moment, that's the end of our episode. My name's been Rhapsody, his name's been Reader of Retromation. There's a playlist in the description down below with all the content you could possibly need in your life. Hopefully you've been enjoying wow. yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye.